Hey everybody, I'm Tom Basso. Welcome back to 10,000 and Below, where we take a look at games that are ranked fairly low on Board Game Geek and look for the hidden gems, the ones that look interesting, the ones that are nostalgic, and the ones that are truly bad. As we kind of do a flyby through here, let's get started with 11,701, and that is Hex and Flug. I always take a look for sure. There's 100 games. We don't look at all of them, but we always look at the first and last one. Let's get started with 11,701, and that is Hex and Flug. I always take a look for sure. There's 100 games. We don't look at all of them, but we always look at the first and last one. So we're teaching witches how to fly. Only the most talented witches are admitted there. You have to let five witches fly as high and as far as possible. Then they'll give you a spell book. Okay. So is this a trick-taking game? It's interesting. I mean, you can see here, when we look at these cards, some, they have different numbers of clouds on them, and there's a moon in the background of some. Or is that just different artwork to help us know the difference between them? It doesn't say. It is a Amigo game, and it came out 10 years ago in 2010. Well, an interesting way to start one off. Let's continue on here with Moonbots. Moonbots is from Blue Orange Games. This came out in 2019, and even though I have a lot of Blue Orange Games, this one here is not ringing any bells. I want this game because it has something I like, which looks like you build a different robot out of different parts. My kids tend to like that sort of thing. That looks fun. Yeah, alrighty, Moonbots. I'll have to remember that one. Maybe it's just not out in America yet. Paper Safari here, I did not give this one a super high ranking, even though if I recall correctly, I did kind of like maybe the way the game looked. This is a Japanese game here. Is it Japanese? No, it's Korean game, sorry. It's from Mandu Games. Ah, it was originally Ruby Gloom. I never, I don't know if I reviewed Paper Safari, I think I reviewed Ruby Gloom. Z reviewed Paper Safari. He might like this sort of nonsense. I do not. Uh, my daughter liked Ruby Gloom, but essentially this is where you have the cards in front of you. It's like Cabo, and you gotta like rearrange them to be the right way to win. I don't know, that's just a style of game that I do not care for. So, as Paper Safari, when I played it, Ru Ruby Gloom. Guardians Chronicles Clash of Heroes, this came out in 2017. Ah, uh, okay. This one here, the Red Joker Guardian, this is, a, is this an expansion for the base game? No, it's a board game. I thought for sure I played Guardians Chronicles at one point, though. It has some cool miniatures. So weird that this one got very, very few ratings here on Board Game Geek. Hmm. Well, there you go. Only 37 ratings. All right, let's slide down and look for one that does have a... Ooh, Casino Yahtzee. I've seen Casino Yahtzee. Um, this here is a suspense of a gambling game with the strategy of Yahtzee. Isn't Yahtzee a little bit of gambling as you pick dice to re-roll them? And you're going to score... Oh, this is this is like the similar... The, like the Yahtzee-style games that are in uh, Dave & Buster's and things like that. That's the one I've seen. But that's a very different look. That Casino Yahtzee there... I've seen this casino Yahtzee is a very do you guys see this the difference between these those look like two very different games huh well anyway let's see here girl genius the works it's a good comic Sick of the Third Reich Refruit this is a fish game a kids fish game in which you're trying to move fish down here and without these sharks eating them so moving the fish up and down you roll dice it's more for younger kids than not not something I'd want to play but kids younger kids might enjoy it all right vocabulary this is a crime, honestly, that this one's ranked 11,717. Vocabulary is pretty fun. What you do each round of the game is you roll some dice, and then someone asks a word, a person who forts in the most inappropriate situations. Babelmatic. Um, and then you see these different things that people make, and they have all these different parts of words, and you put them together, and you mix them up. They come underneath these little plastic things, and one person picks the winner. I, I thought it was a pretty funny idea. 
Alrighty, last stand. Rebels already goes. Fad Fib. Fab Fib. This came out 2004 from Cadult Games. And New Games Orders. The liar folks. They want to elect the great Fibber. I like that. You have to lie to stay in the game. And you give a three digit. Then you replace them. And you have to call the previous person as a liar. Huh. Sounds like an interesting twist on Liar's Dice. I would like to try this one out. You have three digit number. You have to follow certain rules and pass it to the next person and someone's gonna call someone else out as being a liar. I like that concept. Blind it, Hoon. Here, uh, the person auctioning cards. Uh, points are only given in three colors of five available. Blind chickens are worth minus three and golden corn plus two. Well, I do like the artwork. I see the golden corn there. Looks like it's different artwork. That's the backs of the cards. So this is one of those Cosmos games that never came to America. And this came out in 2007. And then we have Jagersro. Jagersro. This is probably another one. This is a horse. Oh, this is from 1945. So a horse racing game from Sweden. I apologize if I mispronounced it there. This looks like a, a, a bigger, more grandiose one where you're betting and look at all those rules and you're putting money on the different horses. That, that's old style paper money. Then we have Lex in Lemon Skate. This is an abstract strategy game. Um, and you are trying to find a logical and complete sequences of eight moves. You're going to place a token back and forth. And as soon as you find a validating pattern where you have different things between them, you're trying to find a pattern, and then you win. And it is extremely deep, and I thought it was fine. I don't think it's great because it's really, really thinky, and it's really tricky. But it certainly is like nothing I've seen before. Spree from 1997. This looks like a cheap-ass game. It is. James Ernest and Phil Foglio did the design for this one. You're going to the mall, and it's, uh, it's begging you to rob it. So you got to go in and rob the place. Park your car, get in the mall. As you can see, these games were not high quality. And the way they worked is you provided your own components. So this person here who took this picture, has My Little Pony stuff in there. And then you played them. I don't know if this is a good one or not. Some of these games were fantastic. Some were not. There's a history of France. Timeline. Stupid Duel. Now, Stupid Duel is one of those games uh, which there's been uh, quite a few of them. This is one of the first ones that came out in 2004. I think there's more complicated ones where you're just fighting with somebody and then you have all different cards that show different things on them and you've got to convince the, the team that you won and tell stories. It's one of those kind of games. Um, and I gave it a six back in 2014, um, which I think was a redoing of my first uh, rating of it when I played it a while ago. It might go down even more. There's These games are a dime a dozen. It's just the, the words you put on them, really. This game here is called Necromancer. came out in 1982. And that is a 1982 Necromancer cover from Steve Jackson Games. Woo! You know, this is interesting. You look back at these little tokens, and you can see the skeletons and stuff on them, and yeah, I get it, but man. Oh, you have to cut. You have to cut these. This was back when Steve Jackson had made people cut the counters out. I, I, I did that with um, Frag. I remember cutting out the counters, and also the... Uh, the things from out of these, the, the green, the green gobs from outer space, whatever the game's called. Man, I can't even imagine doing that now. Wizards Brew. All right. Well, this one I've heard talked about before. 2013 from Eagle Griffin Games. Alan Moon and Aaron Weisbloom. The team, the duo, they're no longer working together to make games. But this was a re-implementation of Death's Amulet. I remember when this came out and they said, Tom, you're really going to like this game. And I said, sounds interesting. And then I never saw it again, unfortunately. Um... We never got a copy of Dice Tower. Those look like magic cards. I guess they're not. Um, I heard Das Amulet gets a lot of love. I wonder if that's on here. 
It's a reimplementation of Das Amulet. Let's see what that one came out in 2001, and that one is ranked 3,441, so fairly high. I guess the, the other one, Wizard's Brew, just never got the same kind of distribution. I wonder why it would be much lower. Castles of Calaria. Cthulhu's Vault. Don't open it. I'm opening Cthulhu's Vault. Cthulhu's Vault here from Jolly Roger Games, designed by Jim Dietz and Richard Launius. Huh. This came out in 2015. I remember him telling me about that. Uh, they told me about this back in the day. Uh, Jolly Rogers Games was not really ever known for their high quality. You can see here, eh, this stuff looks okay, investigators and rolling dice. I remember both of them telling me about this game now, but I guess I never had a chance to play it. Well, it's, there's a lot of these games out there. You, it's a collaborative game. You're trying to tell the story here, but the ending's not set, and so you're dealing with negative things here. So it's basically a storytelling game. I might give that one a whirl. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Rocket Man. Rocket Man, the Axis of Evil. This came out in 2005 from WizKids. Now, this is not the current WizKids. This is the older WizKids. A space combat where you're fighting over stuff. This was very similar to their Pirates game where it looks like you had to punch the ships out. I really feel like I must have bought a couple packs of this back in the day because get, punching these out and building them back then was really attractive to me. But I definitely haven't played the game. But I do remember seeing these ships. Huh. Very few uh, reviews for that. Well, not very few. 162. Never mind. This game is Scape because the E got away. It's an escape. Oh, it is about an escape. It is from GDM Games. And uh, it's an escape attempt. In a, from a German POW camp during World War II. So you're going to try to put a card in the center table to complete the word scape. Huh. Ah, it looks like a small little interesting card game there. Wonder how strong the theme is. One person has to play the SS. I don't know if I want to do that. Alrighty. Mirror, Mirror. This came out in 2012. And it is a game with mirrors. And you have to take a love letter to the other person. There are decoys. And you get to look at the mirrors on the back of the piece. You can So when you move someone behind someone else, you can see what color letter that person's carrying. It's an interesting idea. Unfortunately, the game was okay. It's not great. It's okay. But I like the idea of Mirror Mirrors, and Matigo came out with one later on that was, I think, probably a little bit better. Shift, the single card CCG. From 2013, this fun box. This is almost certainly a gimmick. Like, hey, everything's on a single card, rotating the card and doing things, and I just, I just didn't like it. Uh, too much information. The game itself, let's find one with English on it. The game itself just felt like a whole gimmick, the high, whole idea, like I got a card, you got a card, and it did not play well for me at all. Consensus Movie Edition. I don't believe I've ever played another Consensus, but here, um, let's see, how does it work? It's not a trivia game. I'm trying to remember how this one worked. Make combinations. Maybe if I look at the board, that will give me an idea. Which one of the following movies would a guy be most likely to watch before a big date? Oh, okay. So you put them out there and you're trying to pick the one that most people pick. Okay, I like that concept. That worked well. And that's why I enjoyed the game. I forgot about this. It's been quite a few years since I reviewed it. Kibble Scuffle. I feel like I played Kibble Scuffle. Or at least I've seen it. You're going to try to get food. Different cat food. Clumsy cat. 100% I played Kibble Scuffle. I must have reviewed it. Because I know I played this one. Uh, let's see if there's a review. Oh, Sam. Sam reviewed it. That's right. Okay. That's why I didn't review it. Yeah, you're just trying to get the different food on plates. I was not that impressed with it. But then again, it might be a kid's game. Which is why I didn't like it as much. 
Uh, heroes crossing before the earth explodes. Oh, this one's this one's kind of a bummer that it's so low here, but it is from Green Couch Games, and they make small games, and those games can get lost in the shuffle. But the idea of uh, Green Couch uh, Games, it, to take these small games and make them big, this one here you're trying to get off the earth, and it's basically a rock, paper, scissors thing. So you're going to be picking different letters to do various things to build ships. I want to say it's two-player only. I mean, see if I'm right. Back and forth, yes, two players back and forth, and just trying to outguess the other person. And I liked it. I thought it was a lot of fun. It's from Daryl Andrews and Adrian. Um, and they've teamed up with a couple other games, and I thought I liked this one. And let's see, Crosswords Pyramids. Now, if you're new to board gaming, this that name meant nothing to you. This game, which came out in 2004, was the center of one of the biggest board game geek controversies. Oh, if you can go back and find it, um, and it, where the designer, Jeff Witterich, went and rated his own game, said this was great games. Uh, he also had a four-player chess game. I don't dislike crossword pyramids. There's a bunch of pyramids out there on the board, and you are placing them out to make words, and the words can bend a little bit when they hit the corners and stuff. Really good quality pieces. I'd rather play this any day over Scrabble. I didn't think it was a great game. But I thought it was a decent one, and so that's Crossword Pyramids. But if you want to go down a rabbit hole, uh, probably a lot of the threads about this one are gone now. Um, but, yeah, it was an interesting time, for sure. Scotland Yard Jr., I'd like to take a look at that one. A smaller board. Hmm. When did Scotland Yard Jr. come out? 2014, huh. All right, we're going to slide down here. And do we get to plunder? Yeah, we'll look at cartography, too, since both of these I've taken a look at in the past. Plunder is from r, &R Games. Oh, plunder is a um, deduction game. And you're trying to steal them by figuring out the three landmarks. And so you each have your own piece of paper. You're keeping track of the different things and asking questions to the other players. An interesting idea. It worked well. The production value probably hurt it a bit. Cartography is a map-making game. Oh, this is from Playford Games. I remember this one, where you're putting these triangles down and trying to spread out. Totally themeless. It's an abstract strategy game that I found to have, I thought, fairly uninteresting decisions. Sliding down some more. Articulate your life. And then Terak, a creative strategy game. Oh, wait, I got to look at Bodyguard Overlord. Oh, I thought that's an overload. Articulate your life. You're describing stuff and having people guess. Nope, that sounds boring. Tarak. Oh, yeah, Tarak. They've been showing this off at many different uh, conventions. I've seen this before. I've not ever, oh, no, I have played this one here. Um, but I, re I played it 15 years ago. It says it's a, a uh, the game designer suggests this game is a hybrid of Risk and Magic the Gathering, but most players seem to agree that this description is inadequate. It's a lighter combat game. I remember that being a combat game. I remember these pieces. They were pretty cool. And I remember saying that I thought that the game was okay at best. What did I give it? A 6.5. And that was back in 2009. I would probably not give it such a high rating now. Bodyguard Overlord. Oh, this is actually a simulation of intelligence, deception, and preparations preceding the Allied invasion of Normandy in 1944. Ooh. I mean, the pieces aren't selling me on the game, but it sure looks interesting. Huh. I like the theme a lot. Alrighty, let's jump down some more here. Here's a game called... There's Coloretto, but that's not the Coloretto I know. May Day. And Seven Dice Wonders. And Uno Flash. Look at all three of those here. May Day. Has a lot of ratings. Came out in 1978. Ship to ship combat. Game Designers Workshop. Mark Miller. Won the Charles S. Roberts Award, so I guess back in these days, this was a pretty good game. Seven Dice Wonders. Ah, it is a print and play game based on Seven Wonders. I was like, eh, that sure looks like they are trying to at least... Okay, I don't normally do print and play games, but this looks like a neat roll and write. Wonder why it was never printed. Maybe Repos doesn't want to do that. 
Uno Flash. Forget everything you know about Uno. What? Okay, done. <laughs> Clockwise, counterclockwise. No, it's random. Oh, it tells you who's going to go next? All right, that's a little entertaining. I think I could play that once. Uno Flash. All righty, jumping down here, we have Road to Richmond, the Peninsular Campaign, May to July 1862. That's a very specific name. So it's the entire, it's an extra blue and gray Civil War quad game, first published in a magazine. Man, back in those days, it must have been neat to subscribe to magazines just to get free games. All, oh, I mean, you paid for the magazine, but it's still a neat idea. That is a Civil War game. Quitch. Which quitch? That quitch. What quitch? This quitch. Uh, 64 cards, and you deal them out, and you draw five. Okay, speed game. Jumping down, village in a box. I like that village in a box. Oh, there's Wonderland XII. Is that over on my shelf to review? Or have I already reviewed it? Matt goes saying, I've reviewed. We're going to take a look at all these games in a second. We're just going to click them now. Lagoonies, jumping down, cluster fight, raid the pantry. All right, then we'll come back for show and tile. But let's take a look at all the ones I just mentioned. Village in a Box, Peter Jackson from Game Crafter Games. Okay, Game Crafter Games don't normally make it up real high on these lists, so this must be better than the average Game Crafter game. Not real sold on that artwork, though. Ooh, no. Mm, that's unfortunate. Because I like the, I mean, I would probably give it a whirl, but you got 110 people to rate a game from GameCrafter. That's pretty good. Wonderland 13. Have I reviewed this one yet? I have not. Uh, I'm starting to wonder if I played it now. I feel like I have. Yes, because there's those keys. I, and you have different skills. Maybe I haven't played this one. Maybe I just took it home and looked at it. No, because I played the game with the keys. I must have only played it once, though. Yeah, oh, it's right there, sitting on the shelf. Yeah, I need to give this one another whirl before I can review it. It had some weird things where you're going through the piles looking for specific cards to get those little metal keys. Matt Gosang, this is, I think, based on somebody here. Um, well, it is. He's a local man who said he would drive the Dutch away, and you're just trying to duck who someone is and attack them, and it's just too random of a game for me to really enjoy it. However... I still would like to, this is from Indonesia, I'd like to see more games come from there. Lagoonies, this is a game in which you have this board here where you are gonna uh, be looking through these tiles for different fish tiles, but they're, they're, like, they have, they're like a little bit curved a bit and all the tiles look fairly similar and you're rotating the board underneath them. It's a great kids game. And Raid the Pantry, um, this one I gave a six to, it's about getting food together. Um, oh, look at that food. It looks so delicious. Mm. Yeah, it's just about collecting food. Okay, there's no question that part of me enjoying the game was because of the theme, but I must not have disliked it too much because I gave it a six. And finally, the last one we're taking a look at today is Show and Tile. This one's odd that it doesn't have more. This is from Jelly Bean Games, and they make always cool stuff. And this is basically a Tangram game where you're going to be using two different colors of Tangrams to make pictures so that people can guess what the pictures are. It is way, way, way harder than you might think. But if you think that idea sounds good, you'll like the game. I thought it was fine, not great. I mean, it's just basically Pictionary with Tangrams, but there's some cool concepts there. And that's it, we made it to 11,800. I'm already starting to sense, you know, the, the games are getting a little bit worse as we go down, but there's still some gems that we'll find in there. What will we find next time? We'll see. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching 10,000 and below on the Dice Tower.